Hi, welcome to Texas. We are going to go through some of the important Texas Czech cultural heritage sites, but I want to give you a disclaimer that this is just a sample and it's highly biased because they are sites that are important to me. My family is Texas Czech and I wanted to share the things that I know, but it, I know that it is a sample. So if I miss your important spot, then I apologize and I, I'm, I just know in advance there's no possible way to get to all of the Texas Czech sites. Texas is big. Everything's big in Texas. Okay, so let's start out talking a little bit about Texas. So everywhere on the west side of Texas, there are Czechs there today, but historically that's not really where they settled. Czechs pretty much came in a series of chain migration starting in the 1850s, 1856 actually, and they mostly settled in the Houston area. And they really didn't settle in the in Houston itself because most of them were farmers and they were coming because of the promise uh, and allure of land. And so they came to these rural communities in East Texas and they built new communities from scratch, then they wrote home and then more of their family would and friends would come. So let's let's explore some of those areas together. So what I'll show you here is on the left, there is a map of Texas. So you can kind of situate yourself. The red dot is the one that is where we're talking about. The, the one with the heart is my grandma's house. And the ones with the stars are some important places to my family because we used to live in Houston. So I couldn't get rid of those on the map, but just the red dot is the one we're talking about. But then if you go to the map on the right, then that is going to situate you a little bit zoomed in so you can see a little bit more in relation to some of the bigger communities. So we're starting in Dubina, Texas. Dubina is not a very large place anymore. In fact, some people might call it a ghost town. But basically what happened was in 1856, a group of Czech settlers came and they arrived it, the story goes that it was very late at night and they finally got to the place where they were supposed to be and they didn't have anywhere to stay. So they huddled around a fire. It was pouring rain and they were um, underneath this large oak tree. So uh, dub means a, a, an oak grove in Czech. And so they called their settlement Dubina. But oak grove would be kind of the way to understand it, I guess. Um, and here's a picture of what this what this area would look like in the 1900s. And here is one of the painted churches in Dubina, Texas today. So when I say painted church, we're going to see quite a few of these on our on our road trip. This is the inside of the church. Uh, sorry, it's a little slanted, but you can see that the ceiling is a bright color and there's very intricate designs on the facade, right, you know, and on the ceiling. And you can, you might think, oh, is that like wood ornamentation? No, that's all paint. So someone went in there and intricately painted those designs. So here's a picture of Dubina. Uh, today it's not very well populated. I think this is an oak tree, but it might be pecan. But in any case, this is pretty much what it looks like there uh, today. And it's very similar to how it looked back when my ancestors first came there. So they started out in Dubina, but then they didn't settle there, especially because there was so much availability of land and people really wanted to have large acreages, which wasn't hadn't been possible for them in the past when they were living in the Moravian area where they all came from. Uh, there were some Bohemians who came to Texas, but the majority of settlers came from the French dot Moravia of Setin area. Um, and they started in Dubina and then spread from there. So Ammonsville was one of the early towns where they went. Ammon is, um, it's called Ammonsville because there was a man with the last name of Ammon who founded it in the 1820s. He was an Anglo settler, but it was just a small town before the Czechs came. When the Czechs came, it kind of exploded into a, a bigger population and there were became all kinds of buildings like the KJT Hall. KJT is the uh, Catholic uh, fraternal insurance company that was very, very popular. And 
the, it, that kind of split off into a different group called SPJST, and um, there were cotton gins and lots of, it was a booming community, and they even built a beautiful church. Here's an example of the painted church in Ammonsville, Texas, and you can see it's the same style, but um, different colors, and you can really tell that the people there were very interested in showing their love to God, especially by, they were very poor and they were building things like this. And and that to me shows like a degree of devotion and, um, you know, like a community spirit, that like this was important to them. Okay, so then the next place we can go is LaGrange, Texas. Unlike Ammonsville and Dubina, LaGrange is still a pretty major town. Here is a picture of the main street in Dubina, or sorry, in uh, LaGrange. And you can see that some of this architecture is kind of reminiscent of Europe. And I think that's interesting. But what's really reminiscent of Europe actually is the landscape. Actually, if you've been to the Czech Republic, if you've been to Frenstadt and this area where our where the where the Czechs came from, it looks the same. It's this kind of rolling hills and trees and churches kind of dotting the landscape. And this is one reason why they settled in this part of Texas is because it reminded them of home. Okay, a place that's very important for Texas Czechs in in Lagrange is the Texas Czech Heritage and Cultural Center. And this is a rather new facility and it's wonderful. They have a meeting hall with a beautiful crystal chandelier. They have a library and uh, they also have a Skansen, which is a, an open air museum where they actually transported buildings that were donated to them that are historic and Czech, like Texas Czech. So there's a hospoda and there's the post office and there's, you know, the a farmhouse from the 1900s, a farmhouse from the 1950s, and you can go inside and they've been furnished with uh, items that our Czechs would have used. This is one of my favorite places to go. They did a really great job and it's kind of just open, you can explore. And if you have a chance to take young children there, it would be a very memorable and um, excellent way to share Texas Czech history with with them because they'll remember it. It's it's more immersive than than many of the other experiences available. Okay, next stop is Hostin, and this is just right outside of Lagrange. In fact, this isn't even a <laughs> a real community anymore. It's a very very small population, but my ancestors lived there, so I wanted to give a shout out to Hostin, and uh, some interesting fact is that in the Hostin Cemetery, there's uh, Jan Lidiak and his father, I think he was also Jan Lidiak, or maybe it's Josef, but they actually, they immigrated from Trojanovice, this little town in the Beskides where my people are from, and this is, this is one of my family members, so this is why it's cool um, to me, but it's also cool in the bigger scheme of things because the father and the son were forced to participate in the civil war on opposing sides. And neither of them were actually very, you know, into the cause of either of the sides, but they were, <laughs> they were forced to join and they did. And then after the war, they went home and they farmed together and they lived peaceably. So this is just a piece of Texas history that is, um, I think Texas is very proud of the fact that they continued to live together in peace. And they're buried in Hostine. Another um, interesting thing about the cemetery in Hostine, uh, this is another example demonstrating the devotion and um, sense of community that the Catholic Czechs had when they came to Texas. This is a, a replica of a grotto in Lourdes. And I think this is, you know, the later generation, maybe this was built in the 1930s, but still this, this is a complex structure that was built to show reverence and admiration to, uh, for their faith. And um, just the fact that it exists is a testimony of, of their beliefs and their desire to 
you know, continue on with them. And I think that's interesting. Okay, so then we've got Schulenburg. So Schulenburg's right on I-10. It's a little bit easier to access than some of the, the other places. So we'll go into a painted church now in Schulenburg. You can see that it's similar and, you know, the same shape in general and the same like columns, but the paint, the painting is different, like it's just a slightly different style, um, but it's just beautiful. Here is a picture of the Sengelman Hall. One thing to note is that the Texas checks, so when the checks came, first of all, it would be wrong to call them checks because most of them who started settling in, in Texas, they came from 1856 onward. It wasn't the Czech, but it wasn't Czechoslovakia until 1918. So most of them like wouldn't have necessarily called themselves Czech or if they would have had a national identity, but it might've been more, I mean, Czech nationalism was just starting out. The point is that they spoke both Czech and German. They interacted a lot with Germans and the Germans came and, and settled in the same areas. So here's the Sengelman Hall. This is a German place in uh, Schulenburg. It's a dance hall that was restored, but the Texas Czechs would have danced here and they tried to restore it to be an authentic replica of, I think, 19... 04, I think was the, around the, the date, maybe it's 1894, but anyway, this is interesting because you can kind of get a flavor of how it might have been. And actually dance halls and social gatherings were very, very important to the Texas Czechs. Okay, the next place that we can go is High Hill. High Hill has another painted church and you can see it's just so beautiful and the colors are just so vibrant. I wanted to show you this because this is one of my family members. This is the Stavinoha store. Uh, and you know, they're just kind of humble, plain old buildings, uh, but this place still exists today. So that's, that's neat. Here's another view of that same painted church. And uh, you can also see the organ up here, which must have sounded beautiful. Okay, the next stop is a bigger place, which is Ennis. Ennis is right outside of Dallas and it is uh, just a thriving community now. I think it's more of a suburbs than it is a town. So one of the neat things about Ennis is that it is the host of the National Polka Festival. And of course, you know, that is really fun. And, and since it's in Dallas or right outside of Dallas, it would probably be quite accessible to get there. So I encourage you to, to check that out sometime. Okay, the next place we'll go is we'll just go down the road a bit to Temple. Temple, Texas is another large community and it has a center called the Czech Heritage Museum and Genealogy Center. There are many of these you'll notice around, Tex around Texas. Very, very, very prolific in their Texas Czech organizations. So inside of this hall, we can see this, you know, they have lots of books and displays and, you know, the Croix on display. I just wanted to point out that, so here's some women who are who are in that building and notice that they are wearing the Croix from French Dot. So this is a very typical, you know, the blue uh, with the, the, the blue with the white on the bottom and the, the red on the top. And this is just like prototypical for the area where my ancestors came from. So that makes me feel happy. Okay, next we'll go to West Texas. This isn't West Texas, it's West Texas. And it's, you know, again, just between Austin and Dallas. What, what West is famous for is uh, this little gas station. And it has what they claim is the best kolaches in Texas. And okay, one thing that's kind of interesting about, about Texas checks is I think the I think Kolaches and uh, Klobosnik got kind of confused. So sometimes people call, sometimes people in Texas think of Kolaches and they think of like a sausage inside of a, 
a role, which is clearly a Klobosnik. But, uh, you know, this is going to cause all kinds of controversy, so I'm going to stay away from it. But here we have uh, some of the samples of the kolaches that, or kolach is how you'd say it in, in real Czech. But in Texas Czech, we'd say kolaches. And you can see they've got all kinds, the cheese, the poppy seed, the fruit filled, and they're delicious. So another really great thing about uh, West is they have this thing called West Fest and they have the kolache 5K every year. I don't know about you, but if I'm uh, eating kolaches, I'm not gonna be running a 5K very soon. Okay, next stop is Praha, Texas. I wanted to put this on the list even though it's tiny because Praha means Prague. And it's so funny to me, there's such a, <laughs> a habit of naming these places in Czech, but then the, the pronunciation or, or something gets just shifted just ever so slightly and they maintain it, but it becomes something new and different. So I just, I think that's interesting. So this is what it would have looked like in the 1890s. And here is an example again of the inside of the painted church inside of, in, in Praha. Okay, next stop is Fayetteville. So Fayetteville is really, again, close to LaGrange and Dubina. And here's a view of what the main street would have looked like in 1904, I think. And then here's what it looks like today, the same, the same area. And here is the church. This is St. John the Baptist Church in Fayetteville. And I really loved visiting here because this is where my ancestors literally went to church. And there's literally their names on the stained glass as donors and it just helped me to feel really connected to them and it was a really really great experience for for me to take my kids there and just feel and imagine kind of what it might have been like for them to to go to church there my my ancestors were some of the the people who helped to build actually this church is a it was originally built and then it, it burned down and then they had to rebuild it. But before it was built, then um, the settlers in this town went to church at my great great grandfather's house because they didn't have a place to worship. So I, I think that's just really special. Okay, then my people went down to El Campo and El Campo was once the second largest hay shipping center. And, you know, again, this is the idea that um, agriculture is kind of what drove the spread of Texas checks at first until World War II when people stopped um, being so tied to ag as their main source of income. So here is uh, right outside of El Campo, there's Hilde, and this is a smokehouse that's very famous. And if you live in Texas, you can, you can buy the um, smoked meat from any grocery store, any H-E-B, throughout all of Texas, you can buy Prosex stuff and it's very delicious. And again, also right outside of, uh, right outside of El Campo is Tayton, which this is a news clipping and my grandpa is this one, my great, great grandpa, Bedrich Michna. He played tuba, so that was cool. Okay, so then now we'll go to Snook. Snook is a little bit different kind of Texas Czech community. Unlike the ones that we've been to so far, uh, this was a predominantly Protestant place, and they were, the settlers were mem members of the Unity Brethren, the Moravian, Moravian Unity Brethren, Unity Brethren. There's a lot of different ways to translate that idea, but basically, they were followers of John Hus's ideas. And um, this community is mostly Czech, even today, but they're mostly Protestant instead of Catholic. And this church right here, this is the, the picture I could get, but it's still very active today, which is, which is great. And here's a picture of what the Snook grocery and market would have looked like in the past. Okay, just a few more stops, then we'll be done. Um, so let's go to central Texas. You notice it's not actually that central. <laughs> um, it actually got incorporated into Beeville, and this is right outside of Corpus Christi. Here is a picture of what this place would have looked like in the past. And again, this is another uh, Texas Czech community that was predominantly, predominantly Protestant, I believe, which is which is really important to note that they're not all Catholic. Okay. We're gonna end our tour at a place that I think you might be familiar with, uh, and this is Shiner. Shiner is the cleanest little city in Texas, but mostly it's known for this 
Brewery. And it's Spotzel, Spetzel, Spotzel. I believe that the name is German. Basically, the Germans and the Czechs were frustrated because they didn't have the, they were searching for a beer that was familiar to them and that tasted like home and they couldn't find anything. So they set up their own brewery and they started to make it themselves. And uh, making beer is a very long, uh, historically valuable tradition with, within Czech culture, especially from the area where uh, this like Moravian area where I'm from. I mean, I guess, you know, of course, like Budiovica and Pilsner, Pilsen as well, like the Pilsner beers. But anyway, the beer is ubiquitous in the Czech lands and they brought with it, they brought with them their knowledge and expertise in making these Pilsner type beers. And what came of it was this beer that's now world famous and you can get it even in the Czech Republic today. And this is called the Shiner. And I will leave you with that. And if you have any questions or want to reach out to me and chat a little more about Texas, then I would love to hear from you. Thank you.